Hi, it's Katrina. Number 7. Christ's Body If you've ever wondered what Jesus Christ looked like after he was mercilessly whipped and then nailed to a cross, you're in luck. At the Guadish Cathedral in Granada, an expedition was recently held showing the very first realistic model of Jesus Christ. This was a fully-fledged physical model of Jesus after he was whipped, crucified, and placed in a tomb. The model was based on information obtained from the legendary Shroud of Turin. The exhibit started in central Spain in June 2023 and will continue across Europe until the end of the year. The sculpture of Jesus Christ weighs 165 pounds, and it was made to be as lifelike as possible with latex and silicon. The Jesus replica was made to be in a state of rigor mortis, with the legs bent and the hands crossed at the groin. The sculpture is hugely controversial because everything is visible. Even his circumcision is there for everyone to see. The sculpture's hair is made from human hair. It was placed all over his body, from his head to his feet, ensuring total realism. You can see every freckle, eyelash, and skin pore. It's a truly lifelike model, complete with the lacerations from the crown of thorns. You can see the bruises on Christ's shoulders from carrying the cross. They even gave him a broken nose and a bruised right eye. It took 15 years to recreate Jesus Christ's body with as much historical accuracy as possible. But what exactly does historically accurate mean in this situation? Researchers used the Shroud of Turin to reconstruct his face. Then they put together a realistic body. But the big issue with this is that nobody knows if the Shroud is even real. The Shroud of Turin was supposedly the piece of cloth placed over Jesus' face following his death. It was part of the burial shroud that wrapped around his entire body after the crucifixion. When Jesus was resurrected, an image of his face was burned forever into the cloth. It's a negative image that many Christians believe was seared into the cloth by magic. The issue is that nobody knows where the Shroud comes from. The documented history of the Shroud only traces it back to the 14th century. It appeared out of nowhere in France. At first, it was denounced as a forgery and a hoax. But over the years, the Shroud became a holy relic. And now the church swears it's the real deal, despite radiocarbon dating irrefutably placing the Shroud as being from no earlier than 1260 AD. So, who do you believe in this case? The church? or science. And now for number 6. But first, it's shout out time. I wanted to give a big thank you to Ding Dong Graham Bell and Erica Russell for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries, or dinosaurs, or religious revelations. Number 6. The Evils of St. Columkill Ireland is famous for St. Patrick, one of its three patron saints, but almost nobody knows about the other two, St. Columkill and St. Bridget. St. Columkill, in particular, has a very fascinating story. He's the Irish saint who was banished from the island after he started a tribal war. He's one of the best examples of how even the holiest saints weren't necessarily good people. St. Columkill was born on December 7th in the year 521 AD in County Donegal. He was able to trace his blood back a thousand years to the old High Kings of Ireland. He entered the priesthood at the young age of 20, and later he was given some land by one of his cousins who just so happened to be a prince. With all that money and land, Colmkill started his own monastery. For the most part, he was an extremely religious man. He traveled throughout Ireland and Northern Ireland trying to convert the pagans to Christianity, and within a decade he'd founded around 30 monasteries. But he didn't always try to convert people peacefully. In 563 AD, he started a war between two rival tribes. And let's just say the war did not go well. Prince Kernan of Connaught was slaughtered and Colum Kill was banished from the shores of Ireland. He and his twelve companions were sent to Scotland to live out the rest of their lives. Even though he's one of Ireland's patron saints, Colm Kill spent the rest of his years on the small Scottish island of Iona writing poetry. Then in 565 AD, Colm Killer wrote what's believed to be the first documented encounter with the Loch Ness Monster. Number 5. The Tomb of the Midwife There's a sacred cave in Israel that was supposedly the place where Jesus' midwife was buried. Archaeologists investigating the site recently revealed some new secrets about Salome's crypt. The cave is near the ancient biblical city of Lachish, which is situated 30 miles from Jerusalem. Researchers uncovered clay oil lamps left behind by pilgrims after they visited the cave. They also identified inscriptions on the walls of the cavern left there by worshippers from around the world. 
Many of the inscriptions were written in Arabic, showing just how influential Christianity was in Arabia before the rise of Islam. Sadly though, the cave of Salome was pillaged by looters before archaeologists ever got to it. They didn't excavate the site until 1984, and by then all the good stuff had been stolen. Now they're trying to salvage what they can. They have the cave itself where Salome was supposedly buried. Then there's the structure connected to the cavern that was a grand forecourt. It had walls and mosaic floors, likely used to deal with the unending string of pilgrims visiting the place during Byzantine times in the 5th century AD. Salome isn't mentioned in the official Bible. The story of the midwife is told in the Gospel of James, which isn't part of the New Testament. It's one of the forbidden books of the Bible, not seen as authentic by the Vatican. But Salome's story is still a big part of Jesus' story, especially because so many Christians believe in it. She was there at his birth. The Gospel says that her hand withered and became skeletal when she doubted that Mary was a virgin. But when she touched his cradle, her hand miraculously healed. Salome was then buried in a cave chamber upon her death, and for centuries she was visited by Christian pilgrims. However, the archaeological evidence tears this whole story to pieces. Archaeologists have found proof that the cavern was used by a wealthy Jewish family 2,000 years ago. Researchers think one of the family members was likely named Salome. The name would have been on a stone box in the tomb, so scholars now think pilgrims were visiting some random Jewish woman's grave for centuries, believing it was Jesus' midwife. Number 4. The Order of the Pug In 1738, a group of Roman Catholics founded a secret society that you've likely never heard of before. It was called the Order of the Pug, and it gave off some serious Freemasonry vibes. There isn't any documented evidence to say who started the society or what the reason for doing so even was, but it was likely the brainchild of Bavarian Catholic Clemens August, the Duke of Bavaria in 1740. It was hugely controversial right from the start because women were allowed to become members, but only if they were devout Catholics. This was a huge draw for society types who wanted to be part of a secret society that wasn't strictly for men. The pug was chosen as the group symbol because pugs are steadfast and loyal. This was an extremely bizarre society to say the least. If you wanted to become part of the order of the pug, you had to go through an initiation ceremony. Initiates were put in a dog collar and were then forced to scratch at the door to be allowed inside. They were blindfolded and made to crawl around on the carpet while full members barked at them. It was highly unusual, especially since the group claimed to be devoted Catholics. It's not even really clear what they did, except get together and participate in unusual ceremonies. Then in 1748, only a decade after the group was established, the order was banned. If you were a member of high society in the 1700s, would you consider joining the Order of the Pug? Let us know what you would do in the comments down below, and while you're at it, subscribe! Number 3. The Image of Guadalupe For the past 500 years, the image of Guadalupe has been Mexico's favorite miracle. The miracle occurred in Mexico City in 1531 when the Virgin Mary printed an image of herself onto a cloth, and ever since, millions have made pilgrimages to witness the miracle fibers. The mystery began with a man named Juan Diego. He was one of the early Aztecs who converted to Christianity. In other words, Juan was one of the first Aztecs who valued his life enough to give up his old beliefs and accept Christianity. After all, it was better than being burned alive at the stake. In December 1531, Juan was on his way to Mass when he heard someone call out his name, and that's when the Virgin Mary appeared to him in all her blazing glory. She told Juan that she wanted a temple built on the hill. She also made him her messenger and said that he needed to inform the bishop in Mexico City of her wishes. But when he tried to tell the bishop, he couldn't provide any proof of his encounter. However, that proof came the next day. Juan's uncle had fallen ill and needed a priest for his last rites. And while Juan went to fetch a priest, he was once more visited by the Virgin Mary. She told him to forget about the priest because his uncle was 100% healed. She also had the proof Juan needed to get support from the bishop. Mary told Juan to collect flowers from the top of the hill and stitch them into a cloth. Then after he did this, he showed the cloth to the bishop. As he showed the bishop the cloth, the image of the Virgin Mary suddenly appeared on it. It was a miracle enough that the bishop believed Juan's story. Over the next three years, as the story spread, millions of Aztecs converted to Roman Catholicism. 
This is one of the more unusual and unexplainable religious phenomena. The church has commissioned various scientists to inspect the image of Guadalupe, and they all seem to say the same thing. It's the correct type of cloth from the legend, and also it should have naturally disintegrated by now. Skeptics even recreated the image using the exact same materials. But within a couple of years, their cloths were worn and damaged, while the image of Guadalupe has remained pristine for five centuries. Number 2. Baphomet and the Templars In the 14th century, during the days of the Inquisition, the Templars were accused of heresy. Before their order was annihilated, the church accused them of being in league with Baphomet, an evil entity. But were they really communicating with demonic powers? The history of Baphomet is draped in speculation and rumor. The earliest known mention comes from 1098 AD. The very first time Baphomet's name appears on paper is in a letter written by a member of the Knights Templar. The Crusader was describing how Muslims in the Holy Land called upon a powerful being named Baphomet prior to battle. Modern scholars believe the Crusader was really talking about Muhammad, but got his sounds mixed up. In the 11th century, European Christians believed followers of Islam worshipped Muhammad as a god. To them, that was idolatry, and Muhammad was no better than the devil. It's believed this single mistake in the Crusader's letter led to the evolution of Baphomet as an evil deity. And that's even though Baphomet likely never existed as anything but a spelling mistake. The Templars were suppressed in France by King Philip in the 14th century. The king wanted to erase the debt he had to the Templars, so he had them charged with heresy in 1307 AD. They were accused of being homosexuals, and of desecrating the cross. And, of course, they were accused of worshipping Baphomet. Many Templars confessed to their crimes while being tortured. Then, they were burned alive. Throughout their confessions, the Templars gave varying accounts of who Baphomet was. Some crusaders said the idol was the severed head of John the Baptist, but others said they worshipped a huge cat with three faces. Baphomet as a goat-headed figure wasn't made popular until 1854 by Eliphas Levy, an insane French magician. The truth is that the famous demonic figure likely wasn't worshipped by the Templars. It makes more sense that it never existed at all and was never worshipped by anyone. Number 1. The Holy Grail in Britain According to the Gospels, Joseph of Arimathea was one of the most important figures following the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The story told in the Bible is that Joseph of Arimathea was a secret supporter of Jesus. He also worked for the Supreme Council and Tribunal of the Jews. But when the Jewish high priest took action against Jesus, whom they called the false messiah, Joseph refused to participate. He supported Jesus, even removing his body from the cross and delicately preparing it for a proper burial. Joseph loved Jesus so much that he buried him in his own tomb. Historians think Joseph was likely a real person because he appears in all four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all talk about Joseph of Arimathea removing Christ's body from the cross. However, the most interesting parts of the story can't be found in the Bible. There are legends of Joseph that were written in the days after the death of Christ. Many of the legends spread by word of mouth but some were written in forbidden apocryphal texts. Even though they were written by different people at different times, most of them are fairly similar. The gist is that Joseph of Arimathea left the Holy Land and traveled to England. Joseph was supposedly the first person to arrive in Britain with the news of Christianity. There's also another story that Joseph traveled to England with Jesus when Jesus was a teenager. Then, after Jesus' death, he went back to preach the Gospels. Some legends even say Joseph was Mary's uncle, making him Jesus' great-uncle. The most popular legend these days is that Joseph brought the Holy Grail to England and hid it somewhere. The myth says Joseph, accompanied by a small group of travelers, took the Grail to Britain, where it could be safe. He then went to Glastonbury specifically, where he preached the lessons of Christ until his last breath. Upon his death, Joseph was buried in a secret tomb with the Holy Grail and his mystical pilgrim staff. His body was carried by six tribal kings, and the tomb was forever sealed in an undisclosed location. There's no proof that any of this happened, but there are enough stories about it to make you wonder. What do you think is the strangest mystery or revelation connected to Christianity? And do you believe in the Holy Grail? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.